Hey everyone, it's Alicia Malone. I'm back with another Fandango Indie Movie Guide where I give you a look at the smaller films out in theaters and at home for you to watch this weekend. This week I have three films based on drama within couples or families. Let's start with Wakefield starring Brian Cranston. My wife's first call would be to my office. No, he hasn't come in. No, he didn't say anything. Car still there. The plot thickens. This is a really interesting movie. It's based on a short story and it's about a man who's a father and a husband and he decides he wants a break from his family life so he hides out in the garage of his place up the top where he can see through the window into the kitchen and he decides to stay there for a long time to see how his family reacts to his disappearance. This is a dark comedy and Brian Cranston carries the movie. He's a very unlikable character but Brian Cranston himself is so likable that you still want to follow this character even though he seems very ungrateful for his family and he puts them through a lot. You can see Wakefield in limited theaters this weekend. I never left my family. I left myself. Unshackled. I'll become the Howard Wakefield I was meant to be. I actually got to sit down with writer-director Robin Swicord all the way back at the Toronto International Film Festival last year in September. She spoke all about being a woman in Hollywood and she is a very inspiring figure. She wrote the screenplays for Curious Case of Benjamin Button and for Memoirs of a Geisha, also wrote and directed the Jane Austen Book Club. Here is Spotlight on Women in Film with Robin Swicord. So Wakefield came from a short story. What was it about that short story that you realised it could be a good feature as opposed to making a short film? Oh, I saw so much potential in Doctor a short story. I don't, it's hard to describe exactly what it was, but I felt a kind of hook when I was reading it, mm -hmm. as if, oh, I could just go in really deep here. There is a real story here. And I think it was just his character, because he's unlikable, he's unselfish, he's all the things that we wouldn't look for in a man, yeah. but um, he, he changes over the course of it. And the, it's just these incremental changes through small narrative events. And he's very different at the end. And mm. so that was, that was just something that, uh, you know, it fascinated me. He was complex and I just wanted to go there. Was this a project that you wanted to direct from the start? Because it's been eight years since you directed your last film. Right, uh, there have been a couple of other projects that I've tried to get going in that eight years, but it's sort of typical for female directors to take um, seven, mm. seven to 10 years, really. I mean, there have been studies on this. So I wasn't taking it personally. But I knew that I needed to find something that I loved enough to sort of push the rock up the hill again. Do you see any progress with all the conversation that is starting to happen? You know, I think it's too early for me to, to say that I would call it progress, but I would say that the conversation is now in the open in a way that it was almost bad manners to put it into the open a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I also noticed this year that um, when someone has a mostly female cast, they almost feel guilty if they don't have a female's name somewhere on the director's list of potential. So um, I look forward to that really being more gender blind. I think that it's, it's sad. It's sad to see so much talent pushed to the side for mm -hmm. women and minorities when they feel that you, they have to code something pink or blue before they let you in. For any aspiring female directors out there, what would be some advice you could give them? Oh, go make your movie. Yeah. Go make your movie. Yep, just get it done. Just get it done yourself. Yes, do, do whatever you can. Just make your movie. So nice to talk to you. Really nice to talk to you. Thank you. She is so fantastic. All right, my next film about romance and drama is called The Commune. It's by Dutch director Thomas Vinterberg. We should have to work together with some people that can stimulate us. We should have to work together with some fantastic people, shall we? I don't know what you're doing. Anna, I'm not going to work with anything collective. I'm going to work with en morsom tanke, bo sammen med jer. Har du nogen penge? 
Thomas Vinterberg did The Hunt and also Celebration. This one is not one of his best, but it is still well worth watching. It's set in 1970s Denmark, and it's about a married couple who decide to start a commune full of hippies. Lots of interesting characters, but this all puts a lot of pressure on their own relationship. You're give us something film no. Jeg sidder i et hul i mit eget hus og forsøger at arbejde, men jeg skal forholde mig til nogle kvindeproblemer hele tiden. For helvede! This is essentially a relationship drama and it's pretty straightforward, but it has an emotional core to it and not melodramatic at all. It's a very sweet movie. So if you like Thomas Vinterberg and you feel like something different from his last couple of movies, make sure you check out The Commune in limited theaters this weekend. Hej, Erik. Hej, Anna. Så nu er vi så langt. And I wanted to talk about a film that's out next week because I wanted to put this on your radar and I'm going to be in Cannes and I'll be talking about the movies I see in Cannes but I don't want you to miss The Berlin Syndrome. So why did you come to Berlin? You know those life experiences that people talk about all the time? I don't want this to end. I wish I could stay. This stars Teresa Palmer and it's directed by Aussie Kate Shortland and Teresa plays an Australian tourist in Berlin who meets this guy, he seems really lovely, they go out on a date, that's nice, they bump into each other again and then he locks her inside his house. This is a terrifying movie because everything she does is something that I would do. I mean, she meets this guy and he seems really nice and she doesn't go home with him straight away, she's very cautious, she's very smart and he seems quite charming. And then he turns completely and she is locked inside this house. It is heartbreaking to watch her go through these emotions. You said you want to see? Open the door! No one can hear you. Teresa Palmer is fantastic in this role. It's also nice to see her use her Aussie accent. It's a little bit of a slow burn, so it might test some patience, but if you can stick with it, it is a very satisfying movie, very well done and creepy, it will stick with you. How do you think this is going? Us? Three films all about relationship dramas just for you. Make sure you go to see Wakefield with Brian Cranston as the man who leaves his family or Thomas Vinterberg's The Commune or the very creepy The Berlin Syndrome all about a holiday fling gone horribly wrong. Next week I will bring you all the action from the Cannes Film Festival so make sure you tune into that. In the meantime you can always chat to me on Twitter at Alicia Malone and I'll see you soon. Bye!